Hi, I'm Dr. Emma from Simple Physical Literacy. Please subscribe to our channel by clicking on the button below to see more videos on retained primitive reflexes, how they affect a child, particularly in the classroom. Now today we're going to be talking about school readiness. What is school readiness? It's a new term coined for this I generation of children. Well, school readiness is having the physical capacity to be able to meet the demands of the school day. The emotional capacity to cope in a classroom of up to 30 children and to have the cognitive ability to focus on the task at hand. Executive functions are higher brain functions and they develop as a child gets older, as the brain develops. And the three executive functions that are linked closely with school readiness are task switching. So being able to switch from task to task with ease. So if a child wants to play with one thing and there is only one of those things, that they can go to a different um, apparatus and use that while waiting for this one to be finished. Or they're able to go from break time back into the classroom or from the classroom to the end of day easily. So switching tasks. They can focus. In spite of a distraction at the back of the classroom, a bird flying in the window or somebody dropping a pencil or somebody arriving to the classroom, that a child can remain focused on the task at hand. And a good working memory. Being able to manipulate information, to break it down, to follow a series of instructions without getting distracted or heading off in the middle of the series of instructions. So as a result, a child who is ready for school is able to focus follow instructions, be patient, take turns, pay attention, control their impulses and persevere. And can they do it? Up to half of the four-year-olds who are starting school these days are not school ready. We know that around 30% of children are struggling in school with academics, with social, emotional or with physical problems. And what is this all about? We think retained primitive reflexes have a huge hand to play in this. So if we have a look to the, the recent retained primitive reflexes videos that we did, we'd be able to really see what's going on. But in a very small nutshell today, the Mara reflex, if it's retained, in a classroom setting, the child is hypersensitive. The fluorescent lights, the Wi-Fi, everything around them is just overwhelm, overload, and then they can become quite aggressive and overreactive as a result of it. The TLR reflex, a child with a retained TLR can have poor balance, poor muscle tone, bump into their neighbor, bump into the walls, can't orientate themselves in space and can be a distraction in the classroom for everybody else and for themselves. A retained ATNR reflex has a real impact on listening, on comprehension, crossing the midline skills, so gross motor skills, fine motor skills, so reading and writing is really affected by a retained ATNR. The spinal gallant reflex, which is this very sensitive lower back, a child will have ants in their pants, jigging around, can't sit still, distracting everybody, distracting themselves, that can have a real impact. A retained STNR reflex, that's the W sitters, children who find it really hard to sit in a chair, that has an impact in the classroom and certainly for a young child who's not used to being in a school setting and all of a sudden they're being asked to sit down, to concentrate, to look up and down, to copy things from the board, the STNR will have a major impact on them. The suck and rooting reflexes, which are all of these ones around the mouth, these guys will make really poor lunch buddies. They're spitters, dribblers, they are food sensitive texture, so they won't be the best uh, pals to sit around at lunch with. The palm reflex is when something touches a palm of a baby's hand, usually they grasp, but if it's still retained in school, when they go to use a pencil, they'll grasp so tight and their handwriting will be really poor and it's stress and tension all of the body. These are just an example of a very small way that the retained primitive reflex can impact a child in the classroom. Help. How can you help them? What are you going to do? Are you a teacher or are you a parent who notices that your children are impacted like this in the classroom? When your children are in preschool or in early years settings and they're under the age of five, so they're four, three and two, 
remove all of the tables and chairs from the classroom, allow these children to lie on the floor. You know, in Montessori, they use mats to do their work on. Adopt that policy so that children are lying on the floor. They will integrate some of the reflexes by the repetitive movements when they're lying on the floor. They will crawl from task to task instead of sitting and standing and walking. So crawling will help to integrate the reflexes. Just by being on the floor will improve their muscle tone, will improve their um, vision, because when they're crawling or when they're on the floor like that, the distance between their hand and face is the hand-eye distance for um, reading and writing. So that will improve their, their vision, improve their tracking, and that will all be helped by them simply being on the floor. What else can you do? Get them outside as much as possible particularly outside being on uneven ground. So if you're close to uh, somewhere in nature, like um, forest floor or even grass, you know, concrete will tend to be quite flat, but somewhere with unstable ground. If you have a yard that's very flat and there isn't any unstable ground, introduce stuff like bark mulch, small balance beams, and allow this unstable ground to improve their posture, improve their muscle tone and their coordination simply by them being on the unstable ground. Introduce playing equipment that's going to help with their reflexes too. Anything that allows a child to go upside down is going to help with the moral reflex because the moral reflex exercise is by a child going backwards, which they usually hate, and then curling forward like that. Going upside down activates the vestibular system too, and vestibular system is all about balance. So a child on a swing, on a roundabout, on a trapeze going upside down is activating the vestibular. Children playing ring a ring a rosies is activating the vestibular. Children doing push pull, rock the boat, um, anything that's moving them side to side, front to back, getting the liquid in the semicircular canals inside their head bouncing around, that's activating the vestibular. Scooters, scooter board, balance bikes, you know, if you can do that in your school for early years, are all brilliant for activating the vestibular system, improving balance. And when a child has good balance, they're better balanced in their body, they're better balanced in their mind, they're improving their executive functions. It's going to really help with school readiness and really help them cope in a classroom. Just a few tips to help you to develop the early years um, children who are who are going to be going to school very soon but really you want to do anything that you can to help them to get school ready. So lying on the floor, playing outside um, is really going to help and introducing things that they can jump up onto, jump down, jump off, catch, throwing, catching are all skills that uh, they, they should really have developed by their age and we'll talk about that again. So for now, I hope you understand a little bit more about school readiness and how to help your children to achieve school readiness for the I generation. Thank you.